It's finally happening. After after how many years have we been waiting for this? Okay, because Sonic, I mean, from the, the original onto the, the Sega CD, the Game Boy, the Wii, the DS, he's he's been a part of our lives for so many years, and we're finally getting a Sonic movie. I'm so excited. Let's take a look at the trailer. SFPD! Uh, meow? Meow? All right, so that's the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer. Looks like they spent about $10 on it, and nine of those dollars went to Jim Carrey. Now, here's the thing. I'm not that disappointed because I never thought Sonic the Hedgehog was a good idea for a movie anyway. But it is continuing this trend that is that is very strange to me of taking something that has a built-in fan base. The fans love it, and there's tons of them. They're crazy. They want to see Sonic inflate like a balloon. Please don't put that in the movie. But the point is, there, there's so many of them, and they're all willing to line up and get themselves a ticket. So why not just give them what they want? Just give them the Sonic that we've loved for, what, 25 years now? We, we know what Sonic looks like. Nobody is upset with what Sonic looks like. We don't look at Sonic and go, Oh, what a terrible character design. When are they going to fix it? No! Now, obviously, you have to change it slightly. I mean, you are making a movie, and he's interacting with real human actors, so you want him to look a little bit more realistic. But we saw with Detective Pikachu, I don't look at Detective Pikachu and say, what is this abomination? I say, oh, yeah, it's Pikachu, but he's, you know, got more realistic fur. I mean, the character ha is basically unchanged, except it's a little more realistic. Here... I'm looking, what the fuck is this fucking thing? He's got these, the teeth are the probably the biggest problem for me. He's got these weird human teeth. I don't know what that's about. And also the eyes just are, are soulless. They lack Sonic's charm and his energy. It's just, it, it's a nightmare monster. The Sonic we know, he's cool. He's a cool guy. This Sonic is like some fucking gamma irradiated monster had an abortion baby. And it came out looking like this. This this is ridiculous. I assume they want to sell action figures and toys, so maybe they did some sort of market research and they said, "Well, kids like this this horrible monster more than the regular Sonic." But that that doesn't make any sense to me. Sonic is, is still popular among young people and and the older fans. So really, what drives this decision? Now, I have two theories. One is just that the CG animators are incompetent, which is very possible. Okay, I think they maybe hired like five guys and you know paid them in Burger King kids club meals. Uh, it doesn't look like this movie has much of a budget. So maybe it's just that the people they got to animate Sonic are like, yeah, fuck it, I don't know. Tom has this duck monster skeleton on his computer, but we can just turn it blue and add fur and that's fine. No, no, nobody's gonna care. But I think what it is is just you get these creator types in Hollywood who just want to make something their own. They're not satisfied with just pleasing the fans. They want to, and I hate to say this, subvert our expectations. I look at something like the Power Rangers movie. Everybody loves Power Rangers, and the Power Rangers costumes, maybe they look a little bit low budget, but uh, they, they're fantastic. I, I see all the Japanese Sentai shows that are coming out, and I'm always like, wow, those guys look badass. That's really cool. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't just take those costumes and make a slightly fancier version of those. You know, maybe a little more robust, some some extra design elements, instead of just being like, yeah, fuck it, they're bugs from the future. Like, why? What what benefit is there? Because I, I went down the toy aisle, I'm looking at the Power Rangers toys, I'm like, what kid wants this horrible looking thing? It's like gray and dark, whereas the normal Power Rangers are bright, colorful action heroes. What What is the benefit of, of this? We also saw it with the Teen Titans live action show. Some people are telling me the show is actually better than it originally looked, but we have Starfire. Starfire, a fan favorite character. I love Starfire. And she's an orange-skinned alien lady in the comics. Very voluptuous, okay? You know, she's a she's a good-looking gal. And in the TV show, she's a she's a big black lady. It why? <laughs> I mean, I have nothing against, you know, putting a big black lady in your show if you can find, you know, the right character for her or invent a character for her, but why is she Starfire? We know what Starfire looks like. Why are you subverting my expectations? The worst example of not giving the fans what they want is 
Star Wars. Now, the costumes were fine. The, the set design, that was all great. Everything looked like Star Wars, but that subverted our expectations in a different way by taking away what we like about Star Wars. You know, heroes going on an adventure, banding together. Instead, you just kind of ended up with these tales of failure and all the characters you ever learned to love ended their lives uh, miserable and alone. <laughs> this is, uh, why? What are you getting out of this? Are you just trying to torture us? So I don't understand why these Hollywood filmmakers aren't looking at the most obvious example of what you should be doing. The Marvel movies are perfect. The Marvel movies take a look at the comic book history, this rich history, 50 plus years of these costumed heroes and their fantastical adventures, and it doesn't go, well, Captain America is going to be a black woman. Doctor Strange is going to, I don't know, he's going to be an albino midget, okay? It, it gives us the characters that we already love, and they're identifiable. Iron Man isn't rainbow colored. It's Iron Man, okay? When I see Doctor Strange, yes, his costume is a little more elaborate, has a little more detail, but basically I can tell him, like, yeah, that's Doctor Strange. The Marvel movies <laughs> make so much money, I don't understand why Hollywood isn't going, yeah, we should give the fans a little bit of what they want. That's not to say that you can't tell original stories with those characters. I absolutely want people to be creative and come up with new ideas that we haven't seen before. But I also want a taste of the familiar. I want to see the characters I know. And I want them to go on adventures that, yeah, okay, maybe they're a little pandering to me as a fan. If I want a story about how life sucks and everybody dies alone, I don't want Star Wars to do that. <laughs> you know, I go to Star Wars to not think about that. But, and here's the exciting thing, I think Hollywood is listening. Paramount has said, you know what? We've listened to the fans. We've seen the fact that you guys have <laughs> spent all this time just redesigning the character and being like, why don't you just make it look like this? Everybody would be much happier. We've heard you. We're going back to the drawing board. We're going to give you the Sonic that you, the fans, want and deserve. I see no problem with that. I think that's great. That being said, some people disagree. Some people think Hollywood is sacrificing their creative vision just to please the fans. Brian from IGN probably had the worst take on this, saying it was somehow comparable to the situation with Sekiro. He's basically saying, well, you know, we complain saying we want an easy mode and everybody says we're crazy, but you guys complain about Sonic and it's fine. I'm gonna say there's a very distinct difference there, okay? I think there's something there where the difficulty is, why are we even talking about this? It's got nothing to do with the Sonic that job. But get out of here, Brian. You're an idiot. Because the thing with Sonic is we're not saying, you know, you have to compromise your vision. We just want your vision to look good. We want it to look like, again, something we recognize that looks like Sonic. And I think it will benefit your movie. I don't think it's going to make your movie worse because Sonic doesn't have his shitty fucking teeth. I think the movie's just going to be better if I can watch it without being visually horrified the entire way through. Hollywood, fan service is not the worst thing in the world. You've seen with Ryan Johnson that when you ignore the fans and try to try to switch it up on them, try to catch them off guard, we don't like it. Just give us what we want. I, we're, we're, yes, we're very simple people. We just want to see our favorite characters on the big screen. Okay? Things that we have grown up with are now getting their chance to be big pieces of loud, colorful, fun entertainment. Let us have that. That is what we want. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget, I'm, I'm serious about this, down below, you gotta click this bell. YouTube has me. I don't know what this algorithm is, but people are not finding my videos unless they click the bell. I would love you to click it. I think you're gonna have a good time watching my videos if you like this one. Well, you come on back. We got more of them. More cool videos coming soon. Peace and love in 2019. And I will see you soon.